our last topic in our bonding chapter, covalent bond strength. How much energy does it take to break a covalent bond? This quantity is known as bond enthalpy. Enthalpy is a thermodynamic quantity. We're used to seeing it written as delta H, the enthalpy of reaction. Delta H, there I have it, the enthalpy of reaction, heat of reaction. Bond enthalpy is a measurement of the strength of a covalent bond. The more energy it takes to break the bond, the stronger the bond was. A single bond compared to a double bond compared to a triple bond. It takes more energy to break a triple bond than it would a double bond than it would a single bond. The amount of energy of breaking bonds is known as bond enthalpy. It is always a positive value since it always takes energy to force a bond to break. The bond enthalpy, for instance, for a Cl single bond, Cl molecular chlorine, the change in energy is 242 kilojoules for every mole. The bond energy here, positive 242 kJs per mole. Now notice this positive. To break a bond is always positive. And we have these charts provided for us in our chemistry book. Page 330 in our book is a handy test taking tool page as well. We'll need to have one of these out. The bond enthalpy shows how much energy is required to break single bonds in the first area, double bonds, and triple bonds down below. And notice that every one of these is positive because breaking a bond indeed is an endothermic process. The table lists the average bond enthalpy for many different types of bonds. Average bond enthalpies are always positive values because breaking a bond is an endothermic process. This chart is mandatory to have ready for solving any type of bond enthalpy calculation. You are not expected to memorize. Oftentimes in a national test they will provide you directly in the question the table values for bond enthalpy. I know in our multiple choice questions on our Moodle quiz, they will provide you with the bond enthalpy in the question. Homework, typically you'll need your test taking tool page out, which is just simply a photocopy of page 330 to have access to your bond enthalpies. Here what I'll be doing is just simply flipping back to this particular slide as we need to look them up. Now it says, note, these are average bond enthalpies, not absolute bond enthalpies, average bonds. So the CH single bond in methane would be a slightly different amount if it had different attached atoms, again creating a polar or nonpolar molecule, but they are indeed close enough to create an approximate value for a bond that's being broken and a new bond that's being formed. Another way to consider bond enthalpy of a reaction, delta H of reaction, is to consider what are the bonds being broken compared to the new bonds being formed. And that indeed is the heart of chemistry. We know that reactants break bonds, products form new bonds. The delta H of a reaction can be used as a simple comparison of how much energy it took to break bonds in comparison to the amount of energy needed to form bonds. Comparing the bond enthalpies of bonds broken to new bonds formed. Breaking comparing to forming. Reactants compared to products. Bonds break of reactants, new bonds form as atoms rearrange themselves to create products. In other words, we have an equation to help us find delta H of reaction, kilojoules of energy needed to predict is this reaction overall endothermic or is the reaction overall exothermic? The bond enthalpies of broken, which by the way, 
breaking bonds is reactants. Minus, see that minus sign? Subtracted from the bond enthalpies of bonds formed. Products. Reactants minus products. What are the reactants minus products? And if we use our enthalpy chart, which was on this slide, the bond enthalpy charts, and find all of the reactants that were broken minus formed, we're able to actually calculate delta H of reaction. And I'd like to do that with you with this particular example. We have methane, top of page 9 now in your notepacks, once you're finished writing these words out. Products are being formed, reactants are being broken. We're going to subtract all the bonds that were broken, minus all the new bonds that were formed. And I'd like to practice one of these with you, and we'll do this very equation here. Here's a methane molecule, CH4. Here's a chlorine molecule, Cl2. Those are called our reactants. Bonds break. That's what's happening up here on the scale. Breaking the bonds, forming new bonds to create products. We have a new product, CH3Cl and HCl. Let's examine this step by step. I'm going to do this kind of just by extending the page. Draw this with me, top of page 9. Let's draw this structurally and examine what we're doing. First reactant is methane, CH4. Draw its lewis dot structure cleanly. <laughs> and we're reacting that with a molecule of Cl, single bond Cl. Lewis dot structure. It's making a new molecule, CH3Cl. and HCl. I have a delay on my dots. It makes it very difficult to dry, to draw when I'm putting my dots in. But clearly what I can see, what have we broken? What have we formed? I have four single bond H's here, four single bond HC's. Here I have one single bond CLCL. -CL. Just tallying my reactant side. What do we have over here in products? I now have one, two, three HC bonds. I have one new CCL bond, and I have one HCL bond. Alrighty, so what I've done is just simply tallied what are all the bonds I have on the left side of my arrow, what are all the bonds I see on the right side of my arrow. On the left side, I see one, two, three, four H single bond Cs. And I see one CLCL bond, single bond. What do we see on the product side? Well, I see one, two, three HC bonds, all singles. I see, what else can I draw in a different color? Here's one H, or excuse me, CLC. I got that tallied. And I have one right here, HCL. So I have them all tallied. Back to this chart, let's look up some values. An HC is 413, 413. I'm just tallying that here. What about CLCL, a single bond? CLCL, look for it, here it is. 
Do I have that here? Nope. What else do I need to find? Carbon and chlorine. Carbon to chlorine. Here it is, 328. And an H to chlorine. 413. No, H to chlorine. Here it is. Thank you. 431. Took me a minute. 431. All right, so what do we have? Well, I know I have four of those bonds, and I have three of these bonds. All righty. So we're going to need a little calculator. We're going to need to tabulate all the bonds broken minus all the bonds formed, and we'll find our average delta H of reaction. I should have had my calculator on. I bet you're working ahead of me, as you should be. I think I'll just grab my calculator on the side. <laughs> so, I'm sorry, I'm getting a phone call at this point. What we have now to do is sum up 413 times 4. We have 12, 4, 5, 16, 52 coming from this guy, plus the 242. Once I get the total amount of energy here, I want you to simply subtract the total energy here. Reactants minus products and find for me the delta H of reaction. And to show that math, what we'll end up doing is kind of scrolling ahead. And I'm sure that you've been able to calculate that quicker than I was. So delta H of CH, we found a net value when you simplified that equation, negative 104. So this reaction was exothermic. Now, a quick comment, and perhaps some of you are already asking, and you're just so intuitive. If I have four HC bonds here and three HC bonds here, isn't there just a net of one? And absolutely, you certainly may just simplify. Certainly, I could eliminate these three and leave me with one overall. That's the change, and that would have simplified the equation as well. So absolutely, you may do that. Um, and that's really good advice. Once you get good at these, you'll be able to intuitively start simplifying the equation. Bond enthalpy. Just keep in mind, as we measure an average bond length for different types of bonds, it takes more and more and more energy to break apart triple bonds compared to single bonds. So looking at that value here, triples are stronger than doubles, which are stronger than singles. As another number of bonds between two atoms increases, the bond length decreases, becomes increasingly more difficult to break the bond. So calculating bond enthalpy, the delta H of your reaction, take all of the bonds that were broken from the reactants, and subtract all the new bonds that were formed from the product. Do not change the sign from your particular bond enthalpy value. That's what the negative is doing. That's what the subtracting is doing there for you. Reactants minus products. Bonds broken minus bonds forming. You have several examples to work from your quiz.